What's up, you fucking freaks? Welcome back to High Crime, a show where I take an edible and get way too stoned and talk about a fucked up serial killer. Today I have a really special treat. My friend Will made these chocolate bars and they are delicious. Thank you, Will. I took two last time and that was... So I'm gonna do three. Here's one, two, three. They're so good. Like if this was real chocolate, I mean it is real chocolate, but like I would eat a lot of this if it weren't drugged. Do I do four? I'm gonna do three for now. Fuck it. No way! This is a Korean corn dog. And it's the best thing I've ever eaten. Okay. Oh boy. Feels good to be back. It feels right. You guys, am I framed? I don't know. This is on an iPhone. <laughs> uh, I have never laughed so hard researching a killer before. And that sounds bad, but here's why. This guy is the biggest tool to ever happen to tools. Today I'm going to be covering Mark Twitchell. Mark Twitchell's <laughs> Mark Twitchell was born in Edmonton, Canada. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> in Edmonton, Canada on July 4th, 1979. And apparently Edmonton is a terrible place. They call it Deadminton. If any of you are Canadian out there and have been to Edmonton, I'd love to hear more about it. Also, I just would love to know more about Canada. You are a fascinating people to me. You are all so polite. I think it's really weird. I think you should cut it out. So, unlike most serial killers, uh, Mark is his name, was born into a very loving, stable home. They were very supportive and kind. Uh, they even paid to have his big ears pinned back. If your parents aren't paying for your plastic surgery, do they really love you? I don't know. My mom offered to pay for my nose job when I turned 16 because she said that I had my dad's nose. <laughs> She's gonna hate this. Mark was a lazy liar. <laughs> Mark was a lazy, unreliable liar from the get. An old classmate said about him that <clears throat> he was the guy in the group project that didn't do anything and he would like always make up these lies and excuses for why he hadn't done his part. Nobody likes that guy. Don't be that guy. This is not framed. I'm freaking out. I'm a hack. I can't tell if I'm in a good mood or a bad mood. Does that make sense? He also had a trait that I guess is super common in psychopaths. Um, he didn't have a sense of smell. I had no, what? What? That's not coronavirus, you're a psychopath. So I believe in college, he decided he wanted to be a filmmaker and be the most respected filmmaker ever. Douchebag. He was obsessed with Star Wars, like obsessed. He got a vanity license plate that said DRK Jedi, Dark Jedi. This man is a human fedora. <laughs> you can picture him right now. Pear-shaped body, nothing wrong with that. I love a dump truck ass on a man. He thought he was God's gift to the world to film and women. And you know what? We all have thought that at one point in our lives. I think of right now, I couldn't be drowning in more pussy. You know what I mean? It's like enough pussy. I'm up to here with pussy. I'm <laughs> just like, what is happening to my brain? He loved Star Wars, but he loved the prequels. Okay, strike one. So when everyone was lining up for episode one, Mark started to auction off what he said were actual concept art for the movies. And he showed it to a friend and his friend is like, clearly these are not real. 
And Mark was like, what are you talking about? Of course they're real. Look at this detail. And he's like, no, dude. And then they weren't friends anymore. And he loved cosplay. Um, I think cosplay is fucking dope. You guys who do it, you are so talented, but he was way too into it. He made very elaborate, ornate costumes. He was Darth Maul one year, of course. Every Halloween in Edmonton, there's a Halloween costume contest called The Howler. Let me say it in my Canadian accent. The Howler. <laughs> and he won with this massive, like seven foot tall bumblebee costume. And he thought he was the shit. He's like, I fucking won that. I won $3,000 and a Harley Davidson. Okay, yeah, that makes sense for sure. So he was an online dating aficionado. He loved to go on the dating websites. Specifically, I think Plenty of Fish. So he met his first wife, Megan, on a dating website um, and they quickly got married. And she said that he was charming and creative, but there was one moment that stuck out for her where they were just like hanging out, talking about something. And all of a sudden he was like, have you ever thought about killing someone? And she's like, I mean, I guess like, yeah, everyone gets angry, but like, I'm gonna actually kill someone. And he's like, I've thought about it. I think about it a lot. I would get a homeless person because no one would miss them. And she's like, all right, sick, man, that's awesome. That would be, mm. listen, I've looked past some red flags in my day, <laughs> but I think maybe I would not look past this one. I don't know though. But quickly she realized this guy was no good. He was lying all the time, cheating, and she was like, I'll see you later. So he lived in Peoria, Illinois with her. So after they divorced, he moved back to Edmonton to pursue film. So he goes back online and he finds his next wife, Jess, and they also quickly get married and quickly after that have a baby. And he got a job as a salesman. I think this, I don't know when this was, but he, at some point he was a salesman and he was a pretty good one actually. Um, it's a perfect job for psychopaths, but at some point with Jess, he quit his job to pursue filmmaking full time, but he didn't tell his wife about it. So he would leave at like nine in the morning and stay out for eight hours and come back and be like, what a day at work that was. So while he was out going to work, he started to work on a Star Wars fan fiction called Secrets of the Rebellion. So somehow he got an investor for his one of his films. So his family started to live off of that money. He didn't have really any imagination or creativity. So he would just steal ideas. One of his shows was a direct ripoff of Ricky Gervais's extras. It was called Day Players and it's the worst. It is so bad at some point he made a movie called House of Cards um, and it was about a serial killer that lures in cheating husbands from the internet. It is annoyingly autobiographical. Again, no imagination. And at one point, one of his friends introduces him to Dexter and he becomes obsessed with it. He wants to be Dexter. He made a Dexter Facebook account. So it was just him as Dexter. Do you guys remember when Facebook was in third person? So it would be like, Lila is sad. Most likely is what it said. A lot of Lana Del Rey lyrics didn't make sense. One of his statuses was Mark Twitchell has way too much in common with Dexter Morgan. I fucking hate this guy. Like, I love nerds. They're my people. I like to think I am a nerd. But I wanna bully this nerd. I wanna beat him up. I wanna put on my Letterman jacket. I don't wanna give him 12,000 swirlies because fuck this guy, I'll beat him up. I do not condone bullying. 
Except if you're bullying a serial killer. Oh, where was I? If I just squeeze that out where I was. <laughs> what if I just pooped? Yeah, so he became obsessed with Dexter. Um, so the House of Cards was kind of based on Dexter, inspired by, I don't know. At some point, for House of Cards, Mark rented out this garage to set up like a torture kill room that's modeled after Dexter's. So he used it for, I, I believe, a scene in House of Cards, and then he used it for his murder. And I don't know exactly when he decided to kill someone. Does it make sense? Oh. Another fun thing that Mark liked to do was pretend to be women on dating sites and catfish men. I guess that was just a fun time for him. So his first victim, Gilles Tetro, he was a new transplant of Edmonton. Of Edmonton in in Edmonton. Up in who cares? Um he pretended to be a woman named Sheena. The username he chose was Spiderwebs with two Z's. Okay, you're so clever. Spiderweb catching that. Oh my wow, so <sighs> so she was looking for friends, looking for connection. And so they started talking. We talked for like four days, I think. And then she was like, let's meet up. And she gives him these like weird, convoluted, complicated directions, but he wouldn't give, or she wouldn't give him an address. And I don't know if he thought that was weird. I would, definitely. They mentioned something about an alley, which is super chill for a first date. And then it says to like, go through the garage. Like I'll leave the garage open, go through there, through the door. So he gets there and goes underneath the garage door and it's like dingy and dark. Gilles starts walking over to the door and like right as he got there, Mark comes up behind him and starts poking him with a stun baton. And I guess Jill was like, it wasn't so much painful as it was annoying. She was probably like, what is this chick doing? And then he turns around and he sees this black and gold painted ski mask, hockey mask. So like Jason, obviously I'm sure he was like, this is horrifying. And he starts to hit Jill in the back of the head and Jill's putting up a fight and at one point, Mark got Gilles on the table and he put duct tape over his eyes and G Gilles was like, I am not going out like this. And he started to fight back. And when um, Mark realized that Gilles not gonna go down easy, he pulled out a gun and then Gilles like reached for it or something and grabbed it and he felt that it was actually a fake gun and he said that was like the best feeling he's ever had in the world. And I, yeah, I get that. I would, I see it. So somehow Gilles res Gilles, uh, wrestles his way out of the garage, but the way stun batons work is it's not instant. I guess it's delayed. So like at some point your muscles just give out and you just like collapse and he couldn't get back up. He kept re restoring feeling i guess and then running away and then dropping this couple walks by walking their dog and he's like help me please this guy's trying to rob me i don't think he's trying to rob you okay and apparently the woman was like uh -uh, i'm not doing that because she thought they were he was gonna like pull something and honestly i get it i know i've consumed enough true crime to be like no 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 that's a ruse i just asked how your weekend was see it. okay i'm not fucking stupid mark came out at some point and was like frank what are you doing come inside and so this couple saw like this collapsed man with this giant man with a hockey mask on coming out i guess with this a fake gun or a stun baton no thank you so they beeline it home but somehow she gets away he runs home, he passes the fuck out from an adrenaline crash, wakes up the next morning, 
checks plenty of fish to like look through the messages with Sheena and it was gone. The profile's deleted. Apparently, um, Mark logged on after Gilles got away and said, if you ever tell the cops, I'll find you and kill you. Um, but since he deleted the profile, Gilles never got that message. Okay. Gilles never reported this because he was so embarrassed about the whole thing. He felt so ashamed. After like a week, Mark didn't get arrested. No one came looking for him. He was like, okay, I'm gonna try again. This time it was Johnny Altinger. Mark lured her in with, again, a fake dating profile. I think her name was Jill. Let's call her Jill. Again, she's like, do you wanna meet up? And Johnny was this like lonely, sweet guy. And was like, yes, absolutely. Please, I'm looking for love. And again, with like the weird directions, unlike Jill, Johnny told his friends where he was going. So he told his friend he's he got a date tonight with this new girl. He tells him about the directions. It just, his friend was like, oh, this sounds weird. Like, oh, it sounds sketchy. When you get there, text me the address. So Johnny drives over. So he goes into the garage and Mark is there, just normal Mark. And Johnny's like, is um, Jill? What's her name? Jen. Well, now I don't remember what I was saying. Ah, and he says, Jen is sunk in traffic. If you want to hang out here, you can. She said she'd be here any minute. So Johnny was like, okay, and I think hung out for a second. And Mark even like fake called Jen to see where she was. After a while, Johnny's like, I'm, I'm gonna go home. So he leaves and then like a few minutes later comes back. Um, and he's like, actually, I'm gonna wait it out. And then at some point he leaves again. He's starting to feel really weird about the whole thing. And he's like, I'm gonna go home. Uh, and he goes home, he gets online, messages Jen and is like, what happened? Where were you? 20 minutes later, he gets a reply. That's like, I'm home now. I'm so sorry. Come back over if you want, but no worries. And he goes back over. He just was looking for love. <laughs> my heart so when johnny went back over he went to the garage and he saw mark and he was like and then mark hit him over the head with a pipe and johnny was fighting back but ultimately mark overpowered him he stabbed johnny in the throat um beat him over the head until he died he then dismembered the body and he like was playing around with the body. So he like disemboweled him. He decapitated the head and was playing with it, like made it talk. That's not funny. <laughs> he tried to burn it, but he didn't know how hot it needs to be to incinerate a human body. Apparently very hot. I think he just dumped them in the sewer. Because Johnny had told his friends where he was going, um, when he didn't show up for like a Sunday bike ride with friends, they got really worried. And then they got an email from Johnny that was like, met a nice woman named Jen. She's gonna take me to Costa Rica. I'll see you guys around the holidays. And they were like, what? Absolutely not. Johnny was like, very much a planner and like, um, like, just forget it. <laughs> so they went to the police and they were like, it's fine. Like he says here, he's just going to get chase some tail. The police really dicked it on this one. It was just the most Canadian investigation. Again, no disrespect to our neighbors. Um, and his friends then break into his apartment. They find his passport and they're like, if he left the country, he would need his passport. So they bring that to the cops and the cops are finally like, fine, okay, we'll do something about it. They trace it back to that garage and they check on who rents it and they see that it's Mark Twitchell. So they call him and they're like, when was the last time you were in this garage? And he said, October 3rd, October something. 
Johnny was killed in November, I believe. Mm -mm. And Jill was attacked sometime in October. No, 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 that doesn't make any sense because he was, I don't know. And they were like, did you see maybe a woman there with him? And he's like, no. I believe they bring Mark in, yeah. And they, at some point, brought Mark in for questioning. He told them that he was a filmmaker to make him seem less, I'm more unassuming. And I guess the cops just ate it up. They were like, oh, you're a filmmaker, eh? And <laughs> that was really good. They just like went out of their way to not inconvenience Mark. So weird, it's the strangest. Again, Canada, Canada, tell me what's up. Why are you guys like this? It sounds like you guys don't have enough trauma. No, I don't trust that. Mm, I don't remember. I think they go in to search the garage and find like cleaning products or like a receipt for the cleaning pl products. This kill room was set up with like a torture table and plastic lined walls, just a man cave. And Mark was cheating on Jess with his ex-girlfriend, Tracy. Tracy's such a whore's name. After one of the murders, he called Tracy up and was like, I wanna fuck. And she's like, definitely come over. Also later, apparently he had planned to kill his wife, kill his wife's ex-boyfriend and his boss. I don't know. So somehow he is connected to the murders. I should know that. That's like a very important thing. Whatever. Mark confessed this all to his seven month, seven month, whew, one more time, seven month old daughter. I don't know if they can understand it. They definitely can't understand it. But still, yikes. You guys gotta watch the interrogation footage. It is Deloish. And the cops like, Mark, I have, I have no doubt in my mind, that you have something to do with the murder of Johnny Altinger. It just got worse as I can go. And Mark's response is, why? Just like A plus acting. They looked in his car and they found his computer and they looked in his computer and they found in the trash a file called SK Confessions, which he claims is Stephen King Confessions, but the cops are like, serial killer confessions. In this document, he wrote down everything he did in a story. I'm going to read an excerpt of his SK confessions. It's amazing. Finally, I ordered a 45 gallon steel drum, which would be the final resting place for the body parts before I incinerate them. I was all set, prepared as I could be. I diligently set up my kill room, creating the plastic bubble I needed to create my nasty mayhem. The trap was set, and now it was time to bait the hook. I hate this guy so much. He just tells the story of exactly how he like lures Johnny in, kills him, dismembers him. And then there's a very graphic sex scene about him and Lacey just fucking all night and it's oh at the end of one of the interrogations I believe the first one um Mark was just like telling him stuff he was answering the questions correctly the cops are like great we believe you he goes someone just sold me a red Mazda on the street it was just like like for 40 bucks and it was Johnny's red Mazda um, so the cops were like, why did you tell? Okay. So he tried to get ahead of the investigation. That's like, you're so dumb. They, and, and he, I guess, was let go. I think they brought him back in for questioning and then let him go. I don't remember. But they found DNA evidence, I believe, 
Wow, this whole chunk is just so poorly researched. <laughs> Even though the cops were like so nice to him at first and was like, tell me more about your career. Like what's going on with that? When they got the DNA evidence, they were like, cool. Mark is the guy. Right after his like maybe second interrogation, um, he goes home and starts working on his cosplay costume for this year's Howler. So he's like, if they haven't arrested me by now, they, won't ever in the sickest most amazing practical joke ever the cops send an email as an investor sent mark an email that was like i'm an investor i saw the star wars film it is genius and i want to work with you somehow how can we make that happen and mark's like oh my god he sends him, I guess, the pitch for day players or castle cards, I don't know. And the investor emails back and was like, oh my God, this is the greatest piece of art that has ever graced this earth. You are Da Vinci. He said it exactly like that. And he's like, let's meet up. And Mark's like, fuck yeah. As soon as he left the house, cops swarm him they come out of like vans so he thought he was gonna go have his dreams come true and he got arrested on his favorite holiday halloween um good fuck you dude apparently i heard somewhere he peed his pants when they did it i don't know but but he refuses to tell them where the body is there is footage of this interrogation they're in the car and the cops are taking him around being like where is this body mark and the cops are pretty much mocking him uh for being a filmmaker they're like if you tell us where the body is it's just i lost it if you tell us where the body is this will be a great part of the, the next movie you're gonna make when you get out of prison wouldn't this be a great movie and they're just kind of like <laughs> And Mark is just like looking out the window and doesn't say a word. So he n has never given them the body. And then at some point during the trial, Mark was like, well, Johnny came after me, so I had to protect myself. And the jury didn't buy it. And they were like, nah, man, you're guilty. And he's serving 25 to life, but it's Canada, so he could uh, be out in 25 years so he's up for parole in 2035 i believe and apparently he's absolutely crushing it in jail so like right when he was arrested he got to jail and they were like oh my god that's mark twitchell the news like sensationalized this guy that like has a whole torture room and like dismembers the bodies they thought he was like truly insane so everyone was like scared of him or just like did not want to mess with him he even though he's just like some fucking super dweeb i don't know if i'm like properly conveying how much of an absolute darsh this guy was is that it i don't know <laughs> definitely not i don't know if i got any of that information right <laughs> Who knows? I did it, I nailed it. If you wanna hear a killer, let me know. If you wanna send me drugs, also let me know. Drugs are good. I love you guys. Shh, shh,